Well guys, as I continue to create content and put out videos, it's going to be varied. There's going to be some that's family stuff, some that's gardening stuff, homesteading stuff, um, wild stuff, just creative stuff. If I feel like doing something, I'm going to do it. So as far as consistency, it's just going to be me. It's going to be whatever me and my family are up to, whatever we're working on. A while ago, I met Chad and Monica who came out to help at Jeff Bobblehead Homestead and had some wonderful time with them. Worked with them for a couple days. Uh, we shared a camper with them that uh, I think Albany Mountain Homestead dropped off there. That was really cool. And then also uh, they came over here and we hung out once. Hopefully we'll be getting together more in the future. But one thing that Monica had said was she made a statement about if she got lost in the woods, she would starve to death. And my son Monster Truck, who's now six, would come out 20 pounds heavier. So I want you to consider that for a moment. She said, you know, here she is. I mean, her son is grown up. He's a grown man. She's older than that. You know, she's a grandma. But she said she would starve to death, lost in the woods at this point in her life. And yet my six-year-old would come out 20 pounds heavier. So there is a certain amount of survival that comes into life. To make it through today, you're gonna have to survive. It may not be the type of survival situation you would normally think of, but the more that we can integrate ourselves, like even now, I was just speaking, looked over here. I've got an edible plant. Hmm. I love that. But the more that we can integrate what's around us, in our surroundings, in our uh, geographical location, into our diet and into our lives, the better things are going to be. The more we can familiarize ourselves with kind of the way the real world works. Before everything's paved and before everything's built up with giant mega cities, if we can find this real world that still exists and connect to it on a level, it can really take care of us in so many different ways, but also health, dietary, there's a lot of benefits to it. So part of what I'm also going to do is focus on just some of the simple you can call them survival skills, but just real life, practical application, things that you can use in your life, sometimes on a daily basis, and sometimes just store it up there as information you can use later if you ever need to. I recently took my two oldest daughters out for just to catch, clean, and cook with some panfish. They're going to go do one on their own soon enough, where I'm just going to, I'll video it for them, I'll film it for them, but they're going to do all the work. They're going to have to start a fire with a magnesium uh, fire starter stick, they're going to have to catch fish. They're going to have to do the whole thing by themselves. So it's just kind of part of that integrating these things to your life, putting that information. And it can be fun. It can be a camping experience. It can be an mm -hmm. afternoon outing. It can be a, hey, let's go see if we can pick a salad in the wild and we'll add it to our dinner tonight. It can be that simple, that fun. But then you have that information if you ever really need it later. So many years ago, I did a video on making cordage. I have a series of projects I'm going to work on right now to try a couple different things. I want to do it anyway. It's something I've thought about and dreamed about and considered for a while, but I'm going to share it with you guys. And if you guys can pick up some skills on the way, good. There's plenty of great survival and uh, different mm -hmm. channels out there on YouTube and different people who are very educated in these things, who can really do these things. Um, I'm learning, of course, everyone's going to say that, you know, I'm just kind of giving you a glimpse into what I do. Um, there is a time in Missouri in the near future that I'm going to actually head up with some people. They want me just to do a tour of their land with some people and just show them some different stuff you can use, how you can use it, what some of the benefits are to it, and uh, you know what's edible out there. I've done that for some other friends up there. They're near, uh, near Baker Creek. I went up there, walked around with some friends and just showed them all sorts of stuff on their land. This guy is 60 something. He never knew. But he wants me to come back and do it with his children and grandchildren there too so they can all have that information. First thing he was doing too, he was grabbing red buds off the tree, the flowers, and sprinkling them all over his wife's salad for that afternoon lunch. Like he was so excited to be like, yes, let's do this. And uh, he was blown away by it. So as always, just learn, experience, find local experts, learn skills, real life skills, and um, you know, save that information, share it when you're able to. So today I'm just gonna be making some cordage. I did make a video years ago on it, but for all those who never saw that and just a simple thing, I'm gonna head over one of my pastures and I'm gonna show you guys uh, how to get started. So this one is small because it's been nibbled on a couple times, but this is part of 
doing a couple of things. Well, number one, if there is good wild stuff on my property that I can incorporate into my plan and into my landscape, I want to be doing that. And also, if there's things I can introduce to my property that can just kind of sit there and thrive and survive on their own, I want to be doing that too. So this is actually just a stinging nettle. I put some rhizomes in here, a couple different places behind me. Um, they did go through some drought stuff lately. It looks like they're reseeding themselves very well. But from the rhizomes, to the leaves, to the stems, to the seeds, this plant is just absolutely incredible and so good for you in so many different ways. A lot of people just know it'll make you itch and they don't like it and that's all they know about it. But I'll tell you what, this has absolutely got to be one of my favorite wild plants for a wide variety of reasons. Today we're going to focus on using it to make cordage. So cordage is pretty much rope. You're pretty much taking something in the wild. It could be yucca leaves, it could be uh, willow uh, bark, it could be this stinging nettle. There's a large variety of things you can use. But what I'll do is I'll strip those leaves off, okay? Stinging nettle is what I call a real food, what other people call like a superfood. It is so good raw, steamed, cooked, added to things. Absolutely amazing. I love making a tea out of it. It's kind of like having an energy drink and a vitamin pill all in one. But if you just go like this, you can pretty much strip that without getting stung. And if you do get stung, it's okay. Some people actually for arthritis and other things will intentionally sting themselves with this plant. But it does, much like hemp, have some very strong fibers. So if you break it up, you're going to have these really long, really nice fibers that you can use to make in this case, cordage. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to gather an amount of this stuff, and I'm just gonna show you guys a simple process on pretty much how to make my own rope, and this time it's gonna be for fishing line. Um, ideally, I would like to wait a little longer in the year until this stuff is dried, and I can just kind of crack the dried stems, and uh, it's really kind of, I don't wanna call it fluffy, but it's really dry and stringy, and uh, works really well, but you know, you don't always have, especially like in a survival situation, a lot of time just to sit around and wait for fall till the plant dies back and you can use it a little more how you'd prefer to. So we're just gonna use what we got and I'm actually gonna use this, hopefully, to just pretty much do a full wild uh, fishing pole and catch some fish where making the hook, making the pole, making the string, the whole thing will just be um, all from the wild. Um, some of it will be wild here on my land, some of it will be down by the lake, but that's going to be the goal, that's going to be the process. And all I'm doing right now, um, this stuff can decompose and help, you know, build up my soil. I'm just letting that fall to the ground. I'm just kind of trying to grab some of the longer ones, and that's a project, a process that I'm going to do for a while right now. And then I'll join you back when I got a nice big handful and actually get this party started. So I opted for a change of location, moved out of the pasture up to the garden. This Malabar spinach will be a nice backdrop for this. But it seems like there's more cicadas here. I'm not going to talk an entirely long amount of time, so hopefully you guys can bear with me on that. Thing is, I only got about half of the actual fibers that I probably could have off the stalks that I handled. Um, roughly 10 minutes is what I spent, you know, gathering this. If you're in a survival type situation, you can break off something, you know, whether it's yucca leaves, whether it's uh, some different branches that have nice uh, strong fibers that you can use for cordage from some trees, whether it's stinging nettle, whatever it may be. Get familiar with what works well in your area, but you can break off some branches and you can do this while you walk. So, for instance, if you find some stuff like this and you're like, hey, I might need rope while I'm out here. I've got to walk anyway. Let's, let's pay attention to what's going on around us, but we can kind of make some cordage as we go. Or if you're, uh, you know, thinking... You might need the rope for fishing for food or something. You're going to make a thinner cordage. Um, you know, walk down downhill maybe. Head down to where you think water might be. And then by the time you get there, you might have some rope ready to go. You can make your hook, get a pole, find some bait and catch some fish, something like that. Or make it very nice and strong as you're heading to find a nice place for uh, making a campsite at the night. 
you know, you can use some rope to lash some things together, make yourself a nice little shelter. So I only got about half of that. And then also, um, I never even got stung, you know, by the stinging nettles. I can feel them here now, some other things, until I actually went back to that second clump and started grabbing some of those. Everything I did in that whole first section, I never even felt a single sting from the stinging nettles. So just some kind of stuff to think about. You know, it's not quite as scary as some people would have you think. If you notice as well, you know, I don't really have any of these that are going to be over a foot in length. So they're pretty good. We're going to just kind of shred them up a little bit, make this kind of a, a more, I don't know, I guess hairy looking pile. And uh, when we get those fibers, I'll show you how we do this. If I was making a big, thick one, I would leave a lot of this. Um, just because it doesn't matter if it's like that thick for uh, for making some rope. But since I'm trying to make like a fishing line, I want it to be a little skinnier just so that way the fish are more likely to actually bite whatever I put on my line. So I'm actually just going down to about mm, an eighth of an inch is the width I'm actually looking for because I'm going to be twisting this and compacting it to a degree too as I go. So that should be good. And then for some of this, I'll give you guys a first player perspective. So I'm going to shove this GoPro in my mouth. If you're catching this angle, don't mind. I'm just showing you from right below your eyes what it would look like. And this angle is going to come in very handy for you later when I actually get to making the cordage. Okay, so for this part, I'm going to show you how to get this started from this angle first, and I'll explain it to you, and then I'll show you from back on my angle. But you're going to want a couple, a couple strands of it, right? All you got to do is kind of twist it together. Um, this would be a lot drier and more fibrous later in the year. I could shred them a lot thinner. Um, I've actually even made cordage out of wool before from the sheep that we have here that we sheared. But you're just going to twist it like that. And you're twisting them together, and then you're just going to make a like a loop at the end, okay? A little tiny loop at the end. And now you have your two strands, okay? We're doing a two-strand twist. So I take the top one, and I twist it away from me, and then I move it towards me. See that? I grab it on the top, make it on the bottom. Twist the next one away from me, and then I move it towards me while I pull down and put the other one up there. And then likewise again... Twist away from me, pull towards me, twist away from me, pull towards me. You can see that these are now getting shorter, so I take a nice long one there and I insert it in. And then I twist away from me, pull towards me, I lock the first half in, twist away from me, pull towards me there. At this point I want to add another one, uh, just my personal preference on how this is looking. So I'm going to put that there. You know, I've got one down, one up. Lay this with the middle in the middle, then take the top, twist it away from me to lock that first one in, move it towards me and down, grab the next one that's on top now, twist it away from me, and then pull towards me. And if you're doing this properly, the cool thing that happens is you can actually set it down and it doesn't unwind. So all that's braided up, there's a little loop at the end, and if I let it sit, it can just sit there, and I can come back later and work on it. So I'm going to show you from my angle now.
So this is not going to be the most. So this is not going to be the most beautiful rope, but it's going to do exactly what I need it to do. Um, I can gather more of this if I need, but I'm just going to see how far I get with this because also I'm just trying to catch some little fish, just trying to catch something. I'm not trying to get a you know a four pound largemouth. Just going to try to nail some panfish quick, and if I have a long stick, I don't need this to be incredibly long. So we'll see how this goes. We'll see where I end up, and. Uh, I'll check back with you guys then. Oh, and one thing too. You can take this stuff, you know, stuff it in a breast pocket, have it all hanging out the front, do this while you walk too. Um, you know, I've made a lot of cordage traveling in vehicles. You can sit on the couch, watch TV, practice, uh, watch survival videos and practice making your cordage, you know. Plenty of options to get some practice in, but in a real survival situation, you can also, you know, do it on the fly as you're walking, as you're traveling. So keep that in mind. So honestly, for this one, guys, I don't even know if I used half of it so far. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to taper this one out. This is going to attach the pole. Um, the first time, well, the last video I made about this many years ago, I actually took a 20-pound weight and hung it from here. If I give it a pull, it can have a pretty good pull if I caught and actually successfully hooked a large fish. This wouldn't actually give, I don't think. So what I'm going to do is just bring it down to a point so I can uh, end up making a hook. I'm going to make a gorge hook for my actual fishing project. But this is pretty much, like I said, the basic gist of making cordage. It's nothing more than spinning away from you, pulling towards. Spinning away from you, pulling towards. Spinning away from you, pulling towards. I'm adding some thin fibers here. And uh, I did kind of, from where I started, was kind of thicker. I did bring it down a little bit eventually but I'm going to kind of go a little thinner on the end hopefully without compromising too much so I'm going to grab all these thin little ones now and add some in try to have some good strong thinner um, stuff kind of like a leader uh, kind of right for the end like you'd use maybe in fly fishing where you switch to a thinner line where you're actually having your having your lure make a little more low visibility um, honestly, I could probably stick a worm on the end of a stick and have a fish grab it off. So, you know, I'm not too concerned, but, and then another thing is too, like in an actual survival situation, you guys can see this is a bit of effort. Um, but of course your fishing line can be used to, you know, tie up something later. It can be used for a lot of different things, even if you're just making fishing line as your, your main goal in a type of situation. But the thing is, is. I've got a video where I show where you just walk down to the creek sometimes and just start grabbing fish barehanded. If you know what to do, what to look for, how to do it, and if you're brave enough, you know, you can do that too. So at one point in the video, I think in 12 seconds, I catch two fish from having hands out of the water to reaching in and trying to find some and grabbing them out. So six seconds of fish isn't bad. Here's what I'm dealing with, one rock, Middle of some shallow water, no bait, no hooks, no knife, no fishing pole, nothing. Nothing up my hand sleeves, nothing in my hands. Oh, there's a good one there. Oh yeah, oh, there's a couple of them. Oh, I got at least two. But I've got, oh. All right, check it out, cool. So we're getting some good variety today too. Guys, we got sunfish, green sunfish. But I've got, like I said, a small series I wanna do. I have an eventual goal for this. Um, so it's not just 
making cordage. Um, it's not just catching a fish with it. There's an actual goal in this whole thing. We'll see how it goes. Um, but guys, then by losing these fi finer ones, and I could make this thing probably 10 feet long very easily just with what I have. Um, the biggest stinging nettles I had were probably three feet. So already, you know, I'm probably over two feet. And if you look at it now, compare the top one to the bottom one. You see how I'm bringing it down thinner? I could make it very thin, very strong, and go on for quite a ways. It's not really my goal, but it's kind of what I happen to be doing here at the moment. Sometimes as I'm working on something, things just kind of start occurring, like, like now. So rather than kind of fighting that and kind of sticking with some pre-existing notion of something, I'm actually just going to roll with it a bit and just kind of trust that there's a reason this is happening. I, I don't completely know. And if you think it gets a little thin or if you're pulling on it and you hear like a break or something like that as you're, as you're rolling and twisting and making the cordage, feel free just to add a little bit more in. Um, right now it just feels thin to me, even though I just added one. So I'm going to grab another one and let this one help reinforce that other one. So these are a little thinner. And like I said, just make sure you give a good, a good twist into it. Get that thing started all wrapped up together. And I will check this as soon as I'm done. <coughs> Excuse me. For, uh, for strength still. So I think I'm just going to bring this out and let it go here. And every once in a while you can feel you, you miss some of the tough stuff. This is some of the actual like more woody stuff. So peel that out. You don't really want that mixed in. And I mean, too, if you're just trying to stay warm, you can't sleep, you're in your made-up made shelter, you're by the fire, you're trying to actually survive. I mean, just to make some extra feet of cordage keeps your body moving, keeps the blood flowing, you know, it can keep you warm in a cold situation, you know, help add to it anyway. And then uh, if you wind up with a couple extra feet of cordage, it's not always going to be a bad thing. So it's a, it's a good hobby um, and skill. And, you know, even sometimes the boredom of being lost in the woods, you know, it could, it could help with that too. So, so now to end this, I'm actually just going to tie a knot right now. Um, got about that long. That's pretty good, guys. That's a, where's my other hand? This, this is the hand I'm looking at. Okay. Yeah. So right like that. Pretty good length. It'll definitely attach to a stick. And then um, right now I'm just going to tie it in a knot. I'm going to leave all these because I've still got to attach a hook to this. So I'll just wrap it around, hold it like that, tuck my little fibers through, and then I want the knot right about where it ends. So I'll just kind of keep working my twists down to where this thing ends. Let's say that's about it. Now there they are, and I still got to test this. I think if I can pick up an empty five gallon bucket with this, what I just made, and like I said, I probably still got half of it left or more. Um, you guys probably, if you're unexperienced with this, this may be impressive. Uh, I'm personally impressed at how much it produced off of so little and how much farther I could go. But we're going to see if this can pick up an empty five gallon bucket. If it can, I think it'll pull a little perch, green sunfish, red eared sunfish, pumpkin seed, blue gale, whatever. It should be able to pull one out of the water and hold it just fine. So let's do that test and then we'll move on. Okay, yeah, not me. So actually guys, I'm going above and beyond. This has almost an inch of water in it. Yeah, down at the bottom. So this will be a little heavier. I'm just gonna take this, put a real simple knot on it and then we'll see if it'll go. Back up. So the end that I finished on, I'm tying a simple knot with, I'm hanging on to the end I started with.
eyes. That's that's pretty good. You can see now the water that's in there. And you can see how much I swung it around. So that's the empty bucket. Oh, guys, this is one reason I love stinging nettle too. I mean, if it can do that in the air, I am totally down with trying this for fishing. You can see there's this one little simple knot. Now we're done. Oh, it's still hanging on by the fibers after the knot. Whoa. There's barely any fibers there, guys. It's not much that's actually grasping by. But same thing. That's crazy. So right at the tip where I'm gonna hook up my hook, that's how strong it is. We're good to go. So guys, like I said earlier, now is the time to learn skills, to practice things, to put stuff in your head that you don't have to go to a video or a book or something to learn later. This is what we got. That's my cordage. Um, this is part of an ongoing series. There will be no trivia for these videos, but I want you to kind of consider that for a moment. I just got all that rope. It didn't take me that long. I've probably been messing around for a half hour or so total, but I've got that much rope. That's pretty good. And we're going to use this in an upcoming experiment with some fishing. Um, the next video will probably just be making my simple hook and attaching it to this. Uh, the next video in this series, I may insert other ones along the way, but I'll put these together in a nice playlist when I'm all done. And we'll head from here. So that's the cordage, like I said, pretty strong stuff, pretty impressed. Definitely like it, and one of the uses for stinging nettle out there. I'll put some of my stinging nettle videos in the uh, description below. Make fertilizer with it, I eat it, uh, make cordage with it. It's so good for so many things and I don't even scratch the surface of what's actually possible with this plant. I'm gonna show you guys one more thing before we close this video and then we'll shut her down. So if you guys watch my garden stuff, you know I spend a lot of time out here. These are my Chinese red noodle beans. Here's one of the birdhouse gourds we grew. But when I was making my birdhouse gourds to hang in the garden, I wanted something that would be tough. I didn't want to just hang on with wire or rope or something like that. I thought about stinging nettle cordage, but I thought over time, it's a plant-based material, it'll deteriorate a lot quicker. So I took actually from some of those sheep right back there, some of the wool, and I actually made cordage from that wool. And this has been hanging here a year already now, and in the future, it'll probably be here for years to come. It'll probably outlast the gourd and then I'll be able to use that same cordage on, a, on the next gourd, the replacement. So, wonderful thing to learn, good skill to have, and uh, you know, just the solution I was looking for in just a completely homemade, homegrown, home harvested uh, birdhouse situation there. So, I'll check you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully you learned something. Pop out. Mm -hmm.